I've, I've called this section uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so there is some really great functionality that's available using these tools. Uh, but as is always the way, there are things that need to be borne in mind. Uh, it's not a silver bullet, and there will be still be some work required. Um, so this next little section is just to really talk about some of the uh, some of the findings that we've come across in the work that we've done. Um, and I've also got some top tips uh, for sort of key things to remember as you're doing your project. Some of the key considerations, uh, and as a bit of echoing some of the points of Alison made earlier on, um, this, this will generate a skeleton application uh, that's going to uh, replicate the core functionality of your forms. Um, you will need to go through and do some manual work onto these uh, migrated um, forms once you're completed. Uh, you're not going to be able to sit there, press go, and all of a sudden you've got your Apex application. The, the tools uh, that are going to be available to you, uh, if you set your expectation that you know, between, between 70 to 85% of the functionality in your forms will be migrated across, um, then that's a, a reasonable expectation to set. Um, that will then mean that you've got between 15 to 30% of, uh, of the work remaining uh, to manually tweak the forms, uh, sorry, to manually tweak the Apex uh, output. Um, to, to completely replicate the functionality that's, that's available in the forms. So it's a huge starter, um, and it's going to deliver significant cost savings in terms of uh, the time taken to do the project, um, but there still will be uh, additional effort that will be required. Uh, things that work really well, you know, master detail forms uh, get carried across uh, very well, list of values, uh, and the business logic uh, that's held in your database packages, um, so all those packages and procedures uh, will of course get carried across. Um, if you were going to migrate to some of the other tools out there, uh, for instance .NET for instance, then you need to go and, uh, and manually recreate all that functionality uh, that's held in, those, held in the database objects. Uh, using um, forms to Apex, you can just, uh, of course, use all that um, hard work that you've invested into those objects um, without any additional effort at all. Oracle reports go across well, um, but really as with the forms, if the, if the reports are particularly complex, um, then more manual tweaking will be required. Uh, things that uh, don't work quite so well, uh, and it's important to be aware of these, uh, logic held in forms triggers, uh, other than the post query, uh, doesn't come across automatically. Uh, so there will be a manual task uh, required uh, in, in uh, steps uh, four and five uh, to manually take across uh, any logic in, in any um, triggers um, that are within your forms. Layout of the forms uh, on the screen um, will, will require some uh, changes as well. So uh, star sheets and manually amending of, of the layout of the fields on the screen will be required. Um, the layout of objects on the canvases and so on will not be carried across. We've got six steps uh, that need to be considered, uh, and I've got ten top tips um, that everybody should, should bear in mind as they carry out their project. Uh, I've broken the tips down into each of the key stages. Um, some stages are more complex than others. Uh, first tip is, is remembering your naming standards. Uh, we're kind of assuming that you've got some reasonably uh, logical and, uh, and well-constructed naming standards uh, for your forms. As you migrate these across into Apex, we recommend that you use uh, some of the Apex best practices and, and integrate that with your forms naming standards to end up with something that's logical uh, and consistent um, so that you end up with a, uh, an Apex structure uh, that's easy to maintain moving forward. Uh, Alistair mentioned earlier on um, that the tools uh, should take um, all versions of forms, um, but if they don't, uh, the simplest process, uh, if you've, let's say, got a, a Form 6i form, uh, to run that through the Forms Upgrade Wizard itself uh, to take you up to 10G, and then run it through the, the Apex Migration Wizard. So in those cases, there'll be a two-step process. Um, but in our experience, uh, a good percentage of uh, older versions of forms just migrate across uh, with no problems. If you've got a large number of forms and you want to do this as a batch job, uh, then that's fine. Uh, there's some command lines um, syntax available uh, to allow you to um, migrate a whole directory of forms in one fell swoop, um, and that's going to simplify that step of the process. There will, of course, still need to be some manual steps on top of that. When we're looking at step two, establishing the Apex environment, uh, we strongly recommend um, that you uh, create a brand new schema. Um, if you've got some existing Apex uh, infrastructure within the organization, we wouldn't recommend you try and migrate uh, your forms into that existing 
um, production environment um, because there may be impacts and so on. So what we recommend is you uh, create a brand new ring fence environment uh, and that's where you do your migration. Once everything's uh, gone through and you've done all your testing, you complete the project, you can then merge that into any other existing Apex infrastructure that you've got. But we'd strongly recommend that you, you keep things ring fenced. Um, when you're uh, doing your migration, it's important to remember that the uh, schema for the application, uh, so the forms and the tables, sorry, the tables and the fields and, uh, and the functions and so on, um, need to be uh, residing in the same schema um, as uh, your Apex application. A key consideration is that Apex um, works on the understanding that the constraints um, for the application are built into the database. Um, if you develop your forms application so that the constraints are imposed within the application, uh, within the forms layer, uh, which is possible, um, then Apex is going to have some problems with that. Um, so if that is the case, we'd strongly recommend uh, that you go through an exercise to apply uh, the constraints to the database before you try and undertake your migration. Um, that will allow Apex to then pick that up from the database uh, and impose integrity across the application. One of the key considerations is if you're not going to bring across all of your forms, so let, let's say within your form, forms of state you've got some forms or reports uh, that may not be being used at the moment. Um, what we recommend uh, is that you bring across everything. Um, what that means is uh, even if not all of the forms are going to be used in the Apex environment, uh, it will allow you to have a single place uh, where all of your uh, business logic is held, uh, and that means that you can then uh, get rid of your forms uh, directories. So it leaves you with a single place to maintain moving forward, um, uh, and if some of the forms that aren't used at the moment get, get um, invoked at a later stage, or you wish to use some of that logic, then it's available in your, in your single Apex installation. The annotate function, uh, really powerful. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges of these migration exercises is to keep track of, uh, of all of the components and what's been uh, done with each of them. Uh, use the annotate function, uh, and that will take away a significant amount of the pain from, from that process. And it really allows you, from a man project management perspective, to keep a really close control on which of the objects within the forms have been uh, migrated um, and, and just to make sure that everything gets included. So the annotate function is very powerful uh, and works very, very well. Um, once you've uh, gone through the generation process, uh, this is when you can then apply all your style sheets and your look and feel uh, and all the functionality that's available in, in Apex to, to give a consistent look and feel across uh, multiple uh, pages. Um, so the um, uh, the look and feel, the styling, um, the way the, the forms work, or the, the, way, the way the Apex screens work, um, that's uh, the process to go through at step five. Uh, and the last point uh, is really to reiterate uh, the need for testing. Um, the, the migration tools will, will do a good first pass, um, but they will certainly uh, not remove the need for testing, and, and it's really key to get your user uh, audience involved in the testing process as quick as possible. Um, parallel testing would will, will, will be strongly recommended. If we look at what a, a typical project shape um, for a migration project would look like, uh, we see that there's a, a, a number of steps, um, and they're mimicking the, the, the six steps that Alistair took through. I think there's a couple of interesting things to point uh, out here. Uh, the step that's in here that says generate application, uh, I, as we can see, is quite a small step. Uh, if you were to do this as a manual process, if the migration wizards weren't available, then that generate application process would typically be at least three, if not five times uh, longer in duration if it was to be a manual migration. So the real cost saving in the overall project is in that step of generate application. The other key consideration uh, is, is the ongoing ownership of, uh, of the application once it's been migrated. Um, so that the final step deploy Oracle, applica Oracle Apex application. Well, because we're deploying this with um, easily available uh, code developed using standard Apex functionality, it means that the ongoing maintenance and support of the application is far, far easier than some of the other migration tools out there that would effectively create proprietary code uh, that isn't supportable. Um, so the ongoing support and maintenance of the applications that are generated uh, is absolutely key. 
just in conclusion, um, the migration tools are, are very powerful and can produce significant uh, reductions in, in time and overall cost of, uh, of the project. Uh, they're not perfect. Uh, some manual modification will be required uh, and testing